This is number four from the worksheet that says circular motion examples. So I did numbers one, two, and three in the previous video. This is number four. It tells us that a Ferris wheel has a 12 meter radius and a period of 50 seconds. If you have a mass of 70 kilograms, what is your normal force at the top and then at the bottom? So if we draw our diagram, here's our Ferris wheel. And then you're looking at yourself when you're at the top, so you're in the card at the top, and then when you're at the bottom. Given information, it tells us that the radius of the Ferris wheel is 12 meters, so R equals 12 meters, period equals 50 seconds, and your mass equals 70 kilograms. And what it's asking for is our normal force, so Fn at the top, and then Fn at the bottom. If you remember from when we were solving the elevator problems a while ago, your normal force is how heavy you feel. So you're looking for how heavy do you feel at the top and how heavy do you feel at the bottom. And if you also recall, how heavy you feel is directly related to your acceleration. So if your acceleration is directed downwards, you're going to feel lighter. If your acceleration is directed upwards, you're going to feel heavier. So let's take a look at the top. So top of the Ferris wheel, we're right here. You're sitting in the car, and we want to draw a force diagram. So you're sitting in the seat on the Ferris wheel. You're obviously going to have your weight, Fg. And then you're going to have your normal force pointing up. When you were at the top of the Ferris wheel, the center of the circle is directed downwards. So because acceleration also has to be directed towards the center and down, your Fg is going to have to be longer than your Fn. So at the top of the Ferris wheel, we have a longer Fg and a shorter Fn. Centripetal force never shows up on a force diagram because it's just the net force, but we know that the centripetal force has to be directed downwards. Just like when we're solving net force equations, net force equals top minus bottom, so centripetal force equals top minus bottom, Fn minus Fg. So this is all starting to come back from when we were doing the Newton's second law's problems. The only thing that I have to do here that I did not explicitly have to do when solving uh, our Newton's second law problems is add a negative if your centripetal force is directed downwards. So as a general rule of thumb, if you're at the top of a circle, your centripetal force has to be negative because center is directed down. Again, at the top of a circle, centripetal force has to be negative because center is directed down. So you need to physically put in this negative sign. It won't pop up anywhere else in, say, acceleration. So negative centripetal force is equal to top minus bottom, Fn minus Fg. We're looking for the normal force, so just rearranging this, bringing Fg to the, over to the other side, we get Fg minus Fc equals Fn. My Fg is equal to my mass times G minus my Fc, which is equal to my mass, times the speed squared, divided by the radius, and that equals my normal force. Looking at what I was given, I know what the radius is, I know what the mass is. So I know radius, I know mass. Mass, mass, radius. I know g, that's a constant. What I don't know is the speed. So now we have to go and figure out what speed is before we can continue with the equation. We know that when dealing with circles, speed is equal to the distance over the time. Distance around a circle is 2 pi r divided by the time it takes to complete one cycle, period. We have radius, we have period, so we can get our speed. So v equals 2 pi times 12 meters divided by 50 seconds. And this number equals... 1.50 keeps on going meters per second. And you probably want to store that number in your calculator, maybe as V. Going back to solving for normal force over here, our mass, 70 kilograms, times G, 
9.8 newtons per kilogram minus 70 kilograms times my unrounded number, 1.5 keeps on going meters per second squared over 12 meters, amount of room equals Fn. I write it over here. Multiplying all of this out, we should get 672.73 keeps on going newtons equals the normal force at the top. Only one sig fig, so Fn is approximately equal to 700 newtons. Now, I said earlier that your normal force should be less than your gravitational force if your acceleration is directed down. In other words, this normal force should be greater than 70 times 9.8. I'm sorry, it should be less than 70 times 9.8 when you're at the top because looking at the force diagram, this number is shorter than this. If you solve for Fg, so just taking this Mg, you're going to get 686 newtons. 672 newtons, again, we're looking at the unrounded number here, so 672 newtons is less than 686 newtons. This makes sense because at the top, you're going to feel lighter than what your actual weight is. So rounded 700 newtons, but what we really care about right now is that this number is less than 686. So this is the top of the Ferris wheel. Now let's look at the bottom. At the bottom of the Ferris wheel, the center of the circle is directed upwards. My FG should still be the same length because your mass isn't changing, so FG can't change. That's still going to be the 686 newtons. However, center of the circle is now directly above, so that means your upward force, Fn, is going to have to be longer. Net force, or centripetal force when dealing with circles, so Fc equals top minus bottom, Fn minus Fg. Looking for Fn, Fc plus Fg equals Fn. So my Fc, mv squared over the radius plus mg equals fn. Uh, m is 70 kilograms. The v you hopefully stored in your calculator as v, so 1.5 keeps on going meters per second squared over 12 meters plus 686 newtons equals fn. Multiplying and adding this Together, we get 699.26 keeps on going newtons for the normal force. So again, only one sig fig. It will round to 700 newtons. So they round to the same amount. You're not really having a drastic weight, apparent weight change as you go around a Ferris wheel. So as you notice, 699 versus 672 is not that big of a difference. However, what does matter is that this 699 is greater than 686 because at the bottom of the Ferris wheel, you're going to feel as though you're heavier than if you were at the top or not moving at all. So this is how we solve problems dealing with centripetal force, adding that into what we know about Newton's second law. You're doing the same thing with force diagrams, so finding out where your net force is, where the longer arrow is, that's the direction of your acceleration, and again, the only thing you have to do differently with these problems is make sure that if your lower force is greater, that you put in that negative sign with centripetal force.